In this video, I'll be going over three things. First, I'll be talking about and showing off the Cali Audio LP6 V2 Professional Studio Monitors. Next, I'll be giving away a pair of these Cali Audio Monitors to one lucky winner delivered straight to your doorstep courtesy of Sweetwater Sound, the sponsor of this video. And I'll tell you exactly what you need to do in order to win them. And I promise it's a quick and easy process. And finally, saving the best for last, of course, I wanted to give my perspective to those who are interested on why studio monitors are important and what it means to use your ears and how I've learned to use mine over the years to make better decisions when it comes to creating music and working on audio. Let's go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about these Cali LP6 V2s. A problem with uh, a video like this, trying to show off some studio monitors is uh, there's really no way for you to hear how they sound. Unless you're sitting here in the room with me, you really have no idea. We can try a little something here. I have no idea how it'll just sound on camera audio. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it, but uh, they sound great. Nice and clear, they, they sound perfect. Real punchy, low end. I mean, and the stuff we just hear, we heard a little bit, uh, Magnitude, my, my uh, debut solo album, and uh, another song, um, Everything's All Right, from my project, The Disaster. I know these mixes inside and out, I've heard them thousands of times, um, and they come across perfectly, exactly as I'd expect. And I'm behind the monitors right now. Yes, I went ahead and uh, listened in front of them beforehand after I got these set up here and they they sound killer. Let's take a look at some of the specs here. Here they are on Sweetwater. 199 bucks a piece, which in my opinion is a great price. So 400 for the set. And if you're looking to get into studio monitors or you know maybe upgrade from what you've got going on right now, I think this is a, a great choice here. So I'm not gonna sit and read all of this, but basically they're saying that it's just a great, accurate representation of your music, giving you the ability to hear everything perfectly as you should across the frequency spectrum in a myriad of environments, thanks to the boundary compensation EQ, which I think is totally awesome, uh, transparent. So yeah, they don't out really offer any coloring to, to it. It's, it's just an accurate reproduction of your music, which, which is a good thing. You don't want it to be clouded by too much bass and give you an inaccurate representation of how much low end. You want to be able to trust your monitors and your room and your environment so that your mixes or your music translate to every environment, whether people are listening on a phone or a computer or in their car. And that's that's the name of the game. Or maybe you just want to listen to music or play your guitar through them through your computer and, and have them sound great. And that they're gonna sound great for that too. But here's this boundary EQ thing that's super cool. So check this out. They offer little different EQ settings um, for different environments, depending on where you have your monitors. Are they greater than half a meter from the wall? Are they less than half a meter from the wall? Are they on top of a console? What's your desk setup like? If we cruise up here and look at the back of one of these. So you see it has a diagram on the back of each monitor. And, and then there's this guy right here and it, it tells you totally foolproof exactly how to set it. So if this is your situation right here, you're at a desk and they're next to your computer, you have them elevated slightly right there and they're greater than five feet, five feet from, uh, from the wall, you'd pull the first switch down and have switches two and three up. And I guess that's maybe all you need to do for that. So basically it's telling you 
based on your room exactly what you need to do. So in my opinion, that is brilliant, super handy. So yeah, not much really more I could say other than I back these as a rocking set of monitors at a great price. And I'd love for one of you guys out there to have them. So let's talk about that. Here's all you have to do to give yourself a chance to win these monitors. Three simple steps. Number one, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. And yes, I can tell. Second, consider subscribing to Sweetwater's YouTube channel because they put out stellar gear reviews and offer just loads of fantastic educational content regarding all forms of music creation. And in my opinion, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, it's kind of a no-brainer. That isn't necessary to win the contest, but uh, again, I encourage you to simply consider it. And three, leave a comment below letting me know why you'd like to win these monitors. I'm sure there'll be a lot of great, heartfelt and convincing comments, but unfortunately there can only be one winner. Uh, and that's it. The contest will run for one week from the date of that this video was published, which you can see right down there below the video's title. So one week from there, I will read through all the comments and choose one. And then I will comment on your comment, letting you know that you have won the contest. Uh, and also, if you have an Instagram handle that you could leave in your comment, that'd be super helpful too, because then I could you know, just contact you directly through there. But if it's just on YouTube, we'll have to figure out a way to get in touch, which we can do. Uh, and I've, I've thought of a couple ways we could do that, but there's something that I want to tell you, you need to be aware. If it appears that I've commented on your comment, even if you see my picture, it could be a spam bot trying to take advantage of you. Spam bots constantly infect videos such as this, tricking people into thinking they've won something by impersonating the creator and telling you to text a certain number or various other malicious tactics. I will never ask you to call or text a number. I won't ask you to send money or click a link or anything like that. And to make things even more secure, my comment will include the Chimera Chaos logo after it, which looks just like this. I doubt that spam bots have the ability to replicate the Chimera Chaos logo. Let's hope. So if you see that after a comment, you'll know it's authentic and truly from me. So that was easy, right? Um, real quick again, that was make sure you subscribe to my channel. Consider subscribing to Sweetwater's channel, which I'll link for you below. And finally, leave a comment below letting me know why you'd like to win these monitors. And that's it. Super easy. So now for the final section of this video, if you feel like sticking around for it, school with Professor Arnold is about to be in session. Okay, so here we go with just some free flowing thoughts off the top of my head, totally unscripted, meaning it's not like I have a teleprompter in front of me or something. It's just gonna be these thoughts as they come to me. So I may jump around, may ramble, may go on tangents, but I'm just gonna talk to you like I'm shooting the breeze with a friend. And it's about uh, overcoming some of the early struggles that I faced when I wanted to come up as an audio engineer. I made that decision probably around 2011, 2012, where I said, I wanna go into that field. I was very fortunate with Chimera, my band that I had been in world-class studios many times on a, on a rinse repeat cycle. You know, we'd write, record, tour, write, record, tour over and over again. And uh, it's really just that experience that gave me a huge advantage being in those great studios with great producers, in those great rooms, hearing how they sounded, seeing all the gear and the microphones. Now, granted, I wish now in hindsight that I would have paid attention way more than I did back in those times. But anyways, I still got a good footing for everything and it really helped me get into, um, you know, get started with my audio journey. But one of the things, first, I see, trust me, I read all the comments on every video, especially the audio production based ones, and I see how many guys out there like yourselves are interested in entering the game for whatever reason, whether you want to be, you know, just mixer or you want to be a mastering engineer or you want to just track demos for your band or you want to just make better songs for yourself, all, all that kind of stuff. There's something that bothered me early on when I was learning and watching YouTube videos and taking courses and reading and stuff. And it's, they would say, just use your ear. And that would piss me off because I'd be like, well, how do I do that? What do you mean just use my ear? What am I supposed to be listening for? 
how am I supposed to be using my ear to analyze what I'm hearing to make decisions based on that? I didn't know. And the answer to that is, is just experience. You can't learn to use your ears without working on lots and lots and lots of mixes hearing different things and thinking about them in different ways rather than just a casual listener like you were before. Everybody's a casual listener and a listener to music, but when you're an audio engineer, there's so much more to it, so many more complex layers, especially to create those things or to put polish on those things or to manipulate or change those things. So just working a ton on this stuff, solving problems, seeing the reactions from your bandmates or your family and friends on your work, things like that, learning how to decipher those things, getting your music to translate in all sorts of different environments, like I mentioned earlier, whether it's in the car, on an iPhone or a computer, or on a nice system or in a club, all those type of things come down to, if you're creating this stuff, using your ear. So what, what does that ultimately mean? Or how do you do that, I mean? The way to get started, I think, is what I would, I think of as a scientific approach. And a scientific method is all about eliminating variables to come to the strongest conclusion. So when it comes to, to audio, eliminating variables about, the first thing is not changing your environment so that you can learn your environment. Step number one for that perhaps could be getting some monitors, sticking with them and learning them. I got these monitors from Sweetwater back in 2011. So I've been using them for 12 years now, the ones you see behind me there, based on a Sweetwater recommendation from my rep at the time. I just took a shot, I wanted to upgrade. I was using some cheap Guitar Center monitors, um, you know, and I wanted to upgrade and get, get a better uh, feel for the music that I was gonna be working on and, and how everything sounded. And these were recommended to me. And point of all this is that I've stuck with them this entire time. I know exactly what everything sounds like on them. Uh, and I'm gonna further this point that I'm gonna say here in a second, but one way to really get familiar with your monitors and then your room is to listen to something that you know super well. Let's take Metallica's Sad But True as an example. It's a song everybody knows, I know super well, and it's touted and renowned as having one of the greatest productions in all of heavy metal. There's no denying that, that it's a fantastic production. It sounds great on every system. It makes you feel good. It's got vibe, it's got emotion, and it, again, just sounds great. So. You've heard people talk about reference mixes or A being things. Listen, you, you make music, then put it against, you know, some commercially popular song and hear how it sounds. Is yours lacking a bunch of low end or high end or just sound thin and weak or is it blown out with distortion, whatever. So you make those comparisons. But back to Sad But True, you get to know that on your system so that you know exactly what it's supposed to sound like so that when you put other audio into your system, you already have that mental image in your mind. So. Getting used to your monitors and knowing how all forms of music, especially what you like, sound on those is important. And then your room. You, most people are at the mercy of their room. You can't change it around. You can't blow out walls or switch things around. Typically, let's say you live in an apartment or whatever. Your room is your room and that's what you have. So what are the reflections like? Does it sound like you're in a bathroom? Does it sound like you're in a closet where it's nice, real dead? You know, do that experiment. Go into a go into a um, a bathroom and talk, and you'll hear a little bit of reverberation. Then immediately go into your closet and close the door, and you'll hear the sound gets sucked in on you, and it's a lot deader because there's no real reflection, especially because the clothes in your closet are eating up a lot of those reflections uh, and the bass and just things from the music. So do you have carpet in your room? Do you have hardwood floors? Are you concrete? How tall are your ceilings? What material is on the ceilings? What material is on your walls? You see these uh, these baffles here that, that I have behind me. I have another set behind when I'm turned around right behind me there and I have four of them in each corner. And there was nothing scientific about that, about just treating my room like that. I just put them up with the hopes of killing some of the reflections in my room, and then I just stuck with it, and I got used to that. It's about having a reference point. Then, over the course of months and years working on music, I got to know what things were gonna sound like in this room, and then I could be confident 
making decisions that I started to feel sounded good in here, and then I could take them to my car and they sounded great and everything. And that was what I wanted to get away from. I didn't want to have to go do a car test. Everybody does that. Oh, what does it sound like in the car? You should be confident that it's going to sound good in a car. That shouldn't uh, determine things you need to do to come back and change here in your mix because then you're second guessing your environment and the decisions you made based on your environment that hopefully you've learned and those monitors that you've learned. So, you know, big time mastering engineers in New York City or LA or whatever like that, they're not like testing it here and there or whatever. They know their room with the best gear and the best treatment, uh, acoustic treatments and just dimensions and all that, that it's been built for that. They learn in that, they practice in that, and they produce in that and they produce great results. And so that's what it comes down to for me and what I've learned about using my ear. So, I mean, I could take it a million steps further now about how, you know, working with dynamics and effects and EQ and things like that, decisions I would have made back then. I mean, even I didn't know how to use those, those type of tools as well back then, but now that I know how to use them because I've been working with them while simultaneously getting comfortable in my environment and really honing in on my room and what my place sounds like because there aren't any more variables because it's just this place. It allows me to make those EQ cuts that I need or boosts in certain areas or realize that a mix that somebody sends me to listen to is lacking or accentuated in certain areas. So it all just comes down to that, eliminating those variables and eventually you learn to trust your ear and your ear works better with your brain because your brain is constantly con trying to um, adapt to whatever it hears. If it hears a lot of high end in a mix, you'll hear a lot of high end. And then if you hear something with a lot of low or less high end after that, it'll sound dull, even though it may not be dull. So just those type of things, getting used to everything so that you're not fooled by that type of, of trickery. You know what it's supposed to sound like on your system is what I wanted to express here. I'm sure as I go to bed tonight, I'm gonna be like, damn, I should have mentioned that. Damn, I should have mentioned that. But again, I was just kind of free flowing here and I hope I made my point and it wasn't too drawn out and uh, boring for you. But um, really, that's just what it takes. Practicing a lot in a controlled environment, I think is the name of the game. And um, yeah, like I said, it starts with a set of monitors. And you know what? I'm just gonna shut up here. But before I go, if you wanna take it further, if you wanna keep this thing going, if you wanna learn just how to get started, and I mean from the ground up, even just getting your guitar or a microphone or anything into your computer, or you wanna see some of the audio production tools I use, make sure you check out one of these or both of these videos here to continue your learning journey because they work hand in hand together so well with one another with this video that you saw today and all of my production tutorials. So thank you all for watching. I hope to see you all again on the next one. Cheers, and that's all for now.